So Sarah's little one is sick. So it's just going to be me, guys. And I've got one person I've got on Messenger that's going to try to help me that assists us a lot. Helps a lot behind the scenes. So she's going to be trying to help me a lot. Uh, thanks, April. We're going to do our best. Um, so let's start out with your all story about whenever we went fish. Well, we went fishing. And uh, hello, Deb. Whenever we got down there, yeah. we decided to take a walk, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. So we walked how far? About a mile. Yeah. yeah, we walked pretty far down toward the lake. And then, um, me and us, us looked over the bridge and um, saw coyotes playing. Yeah. We got down there, and it was getting kind of uh, dusky dark. And yeah. we started like... Uh, was, we started hearing coyotes and stuff, and yeah. that's pretty normal, ain't it, guys? Yeah. And then, um, when yeah. we walk back a little, the world will stand up and walk. Yeah, we'll tell him about that in just a minute. Yes. And we got down there. Hey, he uh, huh? said he loves Sarah. Yep, that's Selena. Um, we got down there and we started hearing the coyotes, and we looked over from where we was at, and about 200 yards, there's a line of trees, and we were out in the open where the lake is normally at. But we were in a big drought, so we had walked down there, and I was showing the boys kind of the old home sites that were underwater, the old oil fields, and, you know, we're just finding little neat little trinkets and stuff. And we look over, and we notice that a pack of coyotes come into the clearing through the line of trees over from us. I didn't really pay them much mind. Uh, I have my weapon on me. I carry a 45. A lot of y'all ask me about that. I carry a 45 XD. Um, I like the 45 round. I carry the uh, solid end for deep penetration. That's just my weapon of choice. Uh, it may not be yours, but it's the one that I, I like to carry. It's got a 13 round magazine, and I also carry extra magazines. But uh, we got down there, and the coyotes came out, and we didn't think much about it. So we decided, hey, it's time to go home. It's starting to get dark. The sun set, you know. The truck's probably, I'm going to say, half a mile from us. But we can yeah. see it because it's clear. We start walking. And then Logan yells at me. And he's like, hey, Mike, look. Something's following us. Tell him what happened. Well, uh, when we was walking back to the truck, I um, looked around because I heard stuff crumbling like the old rocks. And then I yelled, Mike, look, somebody, something's following us. And then it looked at us, and then it hopped up in a tree, and then we uh, got in a truck, and then it started following us home. Yeah. Tell them what you seen, Hunter, about what it did, how it, how it went from stand, when it went from sitting to standing and crawling up in a tree shaking it. Yeah. Wait. Like, it was on the ground at first, like on all fours, like a normal coyote. This thing stood up. It was about pretty tall. Was it pretty tall? Yeah. And uh, this thing climbed up on the tree and started shaking like heck. Yeah, it climbed up in a tree, guys, and started shaking the tree like it was just, I don't know. What do you think it was doing? Just trying to scare us, maybe? Yeah, trying to scare us out of its uh, territory. Yeah, and then, well, we went to another bridge. Well, <laughs> just do it. We'll tell them about it, too. But they want to hear about this one. Uh, whenever I looked over, guys, after he had got my attention because he got pretty upset he got pretty scared i could tell it was yeah. something serious i uh i looked over to where the coyotes were at and i had noticed the coyotes have now went from uh four-legged to two-legged and they're walking bipedal comfortably and uh i'm like okay you know we don't want to freak the boys out i've done a video on this if y'all want to see it uh but anyways I was like, can't scare the boys, so let's start heading back toward the truck. So we start heading back toward the truck, didn't we? Yeah. And then the boys, they keep telling me, Mike, 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 look, look, look. And as I look, they're following us along the tree line. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's what freaked him out. And they were still bipedal. They had not dropped down to uh, four legs. Uh, we were trying to make our way across this open uh, area where the lake had been. They're staying, you know, I'm going to say about 200 yards off of us over toward the uh, tree line. Yeah. And, of course, I've got my hand on my weapon. I know if they charge that I'm going to do my best that I can to drop as many as I can because i got the boys with me. And they start howling at us, didn't they? Yes. 
they started howling really loud, didn't they? Yeah. And tell them about the one hunter that you saw run to the edge of the woods and started beating on his chest. Oh, yeah. He ran to, like, the end of the woods and, like, started beating on his chest. Show him, oh. how, show him how he was doing it. And it was yeah. loud, wasn't it? Yeah. We could hear, like, like a barrel thumping. So that was one of our experiences. And then let's tell them about one more before we cut you guys out of here. All right. I'm not going to let them stay for the whole thing when we get into the deep questions, guys. They wanted to tell you kind of what they've experienced. When we go fishing, yeah. what happens to you guys down at our old spot? Oh, we get hit by sticks a lot, yes. It or we get hit with mud piles. Yeah, it throws little sticks up and hits them. Um, it throws little pieces of mud at them. What kind of noises have y'all heard it make? Yeah. What else? Baby crying. A baby yeah. crying. And baby. a cat noise. And a cat. Werewolf. Yeah, over growling. Bears. Scream. Screams. Tree knocking. Tree knocking, yep. Yeah. Oh, and at the old fishing spot, that green face looking thing. Tell them about that. Yeah. It was like up in the tree. I didn't see it. They said that they saw it. It was like green face like a frog is what they said. It looked like a, what do you think it looked like? Like a like a frog's head didn't it yeah but the size of our head it had yellow eyes and me and him and my brother-in-law and my mom we all seen it at the same time yeah that's just a few encounters that they have seen guys uh they want to say one more thing to y'all about their other channel that they're on yeah um, april gave you a comment oh it was april she said you guys are very brave yep no <laughs> uh so tell them about your other channel, oh, yeah. and I'll let y'all get out of here. Okay, wide, up, wide Open Adventures. Yeah. You need to go like and sub to that. Yep. Like and sub to that. You might like. want to share it with some of your friends. Like, <laughs> subscribe, ring the bell. And we'll put the link in the description of this one I posted, guys. They wanted to talk and put that out there, so yeah. thank you guys for being here, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, y'all go have fun. Okay, man. all right. All right. All right, guys. I um, I guess that's about all from them. They they wanted to uh, share some of their experiences with you. I'm going to do my best to answer questions for y'all now. Uh, so if y'all want to go ahead and post some questions, and then I'll try to pick some out and see what I can what I can answer for you. We got a lot of things coming up. I'm planning some things for October if everything works out. Uh, the fuel and everything i'm not sure even motel prices have went crazy high but we've been looking at some places and we're, we're definitely going to do a uh, halloween special uh, so we'll see what what happens with that yeah they are very brave and adorable them little guys are my uh, that's my buddies right there my fishing hunting buddies we uh, run around everywhere together thanks janice but uh We've been looking at some places. Uh, I've had a lot of people contact me, giving us permission to go on their land. We went on a lot of people's land here lately that's had problems. Uh, you know, we went to the one place we said we're not going to go back to. That ended up being spiritual and demonic. Not into that. Um, see, some, so there's another guy. There's a pond he wanted us to go to. The uh, pond hasn't been accessible because we were flooded, but now that we're not flooded anymore, we may be able to get down to that pond and I'm looking forward to it because they got so scared of what's going on down there that they've actually fenced it off and don't even use it and that's where the lady actually got urinated on so I'm kind of excited to go down and check that out. Um, let's see. What else do we got going on? I think we got, yeah, we got a, another guy, he's, he's been talking to us about getting chased, so if he's getting chased, I definitely want to go check that out, that, that really interests me about getting chased, because I like to get those close-up encounters, I don't know if the girls like to so much, but I like to, I'm sorry guys, I'm just checking to make sure I'm not missing any questions, I ain't got no questions in here, okay. So y'all do have video. You can see us on video right now also, right? And have good sound. Make sure y'all can see us. I got some people saying they don't have video. I want to make sure that y'all can see us. 
Okay. All right, April. Uh, do you, her question is, do you think your experience as a kid makes them drawn to you more as an adult? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't think it's because I seen them as a kid. I think it's probably the interactions I had with them as a kid. Uh, when they were around my grannies a lot, that's how I first become, you know, aware of them. And uh, I hunted them with my cousin. And there was a time that uh, we've done, I've done a video on it where me and him shot one, and I believe it was mortally injured. I do believe that it did die later. It did try to attack us in the cattails. Um, I actually done a video it's called Cattails. Uh, I think the reason they become attached to you is two reasons. I think either you you make them mad or you have a bad encounter with them. And they've always been after my mom. It seemed like everybody says it was always after my mom. She was the uh, one that everybody said that, you know, they, they worried about it getting because it seemed like it really had an interest in her. And uh, I don't know. It's kind of weird because even when she was young, it was the one that it always picked. But also my mom, I believe, was the one that seen it the closest. So maybe that had something to do with it. She was uh, left in the car one night. And uh, while she was left in the car, she woke up because they carried in groceries and she ran to the house. And then I believe she went out and was sitting on the porch or something. I'll get the whole story from her. And she looked underneath the porch and it was looking up over the porch at her with like its chin at the bottom of the steps. And uh, she said it looked just like a werewolf. It was blinking, moving its face and everything. And it, it smiled at her. So yeah, I think it, it depends on the interactions you have with it. Uh, Linda says, all right, Mike, you and you all go into many dangerous trips. Why do you think that you all have not been attacked? I know you all pray before in each adventure. I think of another reason I will see if I am right. Okay, I think the reason that we're not attacked is I've been around them all my life, so I kind of know I feel like there's a boundary that you don't push. Kind of like a, a, a dog in a yard. You know, if he's protecting his yard, he's going to run up to that boundary that he's used to protecting and uh, usually where they urinate and have marked their territory. If you pass that, then they're going to fight you because it's a territorial issue. I think that the growls you hear, the, the whoops that you hear, the whistles that you hear, that's them communicating with each other. Some of that is used to also try to ward you away. Um, I think that uh, the reason that I don't get attacked is I don't push it. I think a lot of people are attacked, and I think a lot of deaths that happen may not all be accidental drownings or hunting accidents you know where the hunter fell out of the deer stand and he broke his neck uh, if you watch during hunting season you'll see a lot of accidents and more people in the woods uh, has been resulting in a lot more people being attacked so I think that probably has a lot to do with it. another reason I do use uh, I'm, I'm Christian so anytime that I feel like something's demonic, Linda, I uh, use the power of Jesus Christ. I don't believe in using any other thing, um, you know, in my teaching and in my belief. Uh, that's what I believe. I don't believe in using other instruments of salt and things of that nature. I've been asked that a lot here lately. I rebuke it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he's above all and it has to listen. I don't believe that these creatures, this is probably going to cause a debate. Now, this is just my opinion. Like I said, I'm open-minded, and I could be wrong someday. So if somebody proves me wrong, I'd, you know, I'd be proud to be proved wrong. As an investigator, and even in my old job, you know, we're taught to have an open mind because you're not able to learn things if you don't have an open mind. You may not always agree with where the evidence takes you, but the evidence will eventually always take you to the truth. Uh, I don't believe these beings are spiritual portal dimensional travelers I believe that they are a lost possible civilization or creature that has been lost in the woods since the beginning of time probably as old as us if not older um, I think that their ways in the woods are far, are far superior than ours because they live down there so they're going to be way more superior than us at hiding hunting you know hunter gathering eating stuff like that a lot of people say, well, then how do they get so close to people without them knowing? Well, my uncle was a United States Navy SEAL. He was a sniper and all that, and I have another friend that's a sniper. They can be feet from you and move across an open field, and you'll never know it. If a sniper can do that, imagine what an animal in the wild can do that actually has to do that for survival.
to find this next meal. So that's kind of my thing on that. Uh, let's see if we got any more. Hope I answered your question. Uh, good, Linda. But yeah, it, it does get pretty scary down there. I mean, there are some times that I've been really scared. I mean, <laughs> there's times down there whenever you just want to, you know, you want to run or you want to go home. But uh, you got to keep your head about yourself. And like I say, keep your head on a swivel. Stay calm. Make rational and calm decisions. Uh, you know, a warrior is never out of control. And we was taught that in my training. So as long as you're in control, you have a lot better chance of getting out of the situation than you do if you lose control and just go crazy and start scaring everybody. That's just going to cause everybody else to go into a panic. Linda, I also feel that your heritage with the Lord, they know you all, that the protection is still active for generations as long as they stay with God. Thank you. Yeah, um, another thing that I would add to that, I think, you know, a lot of investigators are saying uh, when they go out and they track Bigfoot, they're uh, seeing a lot of orbs and they're seeing spiritual things manifesting and uh, aliens. My personal belief, again, is just my opinion. Like I said, I may be proven wrong someday. I believe aliens to be demons. I believe that they are the great deceivers. It goes back to the Anunnaki. I won't go all into that with you guys, but uh, I can talk on that forever. I think that... Uh, trying to think how to put this they the spirits know that you're out there with these mechanical devices that allow them to manifest and show themselves if you're walking in the woods or around cemeteries and you're hunting these dog men or somewhere where somebody was killed or a place that had bad energy and where familiar spirits is what I call them where they're at then they're going to use the opportunity to manifest in the equipment that you're using to be able to show themselves. I mean, that's what they're about. They're trying to scare you. They're trying to deceive you. And I think that whenever you have that equipment out there, they're just going to take advantage of it. Uh, we've had a few things, you know, where they've talked and it said things to us. And, you know, a lot of people get misconceived and say, well, it's Bigfoot and all that. But I, I say don't let them confuse you because the enemy is the master of, uh, you know, of deceiving us. You know, he's here to steal, kill, rob, and destroy. And um, I just think that they're manifesting because they have the opportunity to, and they're going to take advantage of us being out in the field. I tell them to go on in Jesus' name and just be done with it. Giggly, grig, grigly bear, grigly bear. Sorry, my glasses. <laughs> I might need thicker ones. Not saying I know anything for a fact. I speculate. They're also curious. Monkeys can be curious and do things. Sometimes they may be aggressive. Other times they're just mischievous or simply playful. Yeah, uh, I wondered at and a lot of the uh, 411 missing where the children end up missing and then they find them dead and they haven't been consumed. I know that my, my people on Cherokee and other tribes that haven't even met each other said they did steal children and they did eat them. I've also wondered sometimes if maybe they take them and they play too rough with them and they accidentally kill them because... I mean, their strength is going to be way stronger than ours, and their playful tactics may be more than what our little children's, you know, or maybe even our human bodies can deal with. Linda says, yes, they are demonic. I believe that they are all manifested in different forms, including humans. Uh, you're talking about uh, Bigfoot, Linda, or are you just talking about uh, familiar spirits? Selena, yes. Uh, I believe that the creatures were here, like I said, along with us or before us. They are flesh and blood. I have seen their blood. I have wounded one. As far as your super soldiers, I 100% agree. I believe that the government has got a hold of these creatures and there is no telling what kind of DNA or experiments or what they have crossbred them with or what they've even created that they've released to see, you know, what it does or how it reacts. Uh, yeah, I, I agree.
Bigfoot. Uh, I would say, Linda, that on, on just my opinion on the Bigfoots been demonic, I don't believe they are. And the reason I don't believe they are is because uh, my teachings, um, if they were demonic, they would not be able to take on a physical body. Um, whenever I shot the one I shot, I seen the blood. I seen it fall. I heard the bullet strike it. If you're a hunter, you know what the report sounds like. Uh, I seen the blood follow the, the trail. It was wounded. I seen how it moved. It moved as a wounded animal. It laid behind the chicken house. Uh, it was making wounded, painful noises. Um, I have also seen it at the back of my granny's eating the scraps that they threw out. Um, a friend of mine that has passed away now that left me a letter that got really close to it. And I think y'all would enjoy that video. Uh, I believe it's called like 50 years or something like that. I'll try it. It's like 50 years or something like that. But anyways, he left me a letter and I read it. He got really close to it at my granny's. And um, it was eating. It was actually physically eating. And I, I just, to me... If it was demonic and it was a spirit, it wouldn't bleed. Um, it would need no uh, no need for food. And uh, when you tell it to leave in Jesus' name, these creatures don't leave. I've tried that. The other spirits do leave. We had, you know, one night we had uh, something that just kept on talking and talking and talking. And we knew at the time that it was probably a spirit. So we just got together and we prayed and told it that it couldn't be there in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It had to leave. The rest of the night was so peaceful you could hear the shad flipping in the creek all night so that's you know just my opinion Linda uh, unless you know not like I said I don't believe any of us know 100% but that's just from my experiences and what I have observed and my opinion I appreciate the question though you got anybody else Oh, and I did not rub bacon grease on Sarah's feet, so she didn't get eight, and I did not run her, so yeah, she's still alive, she's still with us. Patricia Bunn, um, she says, I don't believe Bigfoot are demonic, I believe they were created by the creator like we are, but they are pure and uncorrupted like people with the way we have been taught. Um, I look at them as a very intelligent species, hominid species. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm not real sure about if they would hurt us or not. I don't know if that's what you're saying. I think that they're kind of like a lion. They are an untamed animal that could never be tamed. I believe that they're going to be dangerous in any situation you're in. I believe that there's times that they see you and they're like, eh, I'll let him pass by. A more, you know, passive-aggressive one. And then you're just going to have that one that's out there he's going to see and he's just going to hate you. And he's, you know, he may just want to rip you limb from limb and he may be the one that kills everything. But I do believe they're smart enough to know, like, how to kill you to where it looks like a uh, accident because I think that they've been hunted so much and I believe they have a high intelligence and I think they know that if they go down there and they make it obvious that it wasn't an accident that they're going to be hunted you know fish and game uh, search and rescue and I believe that's why the bodies are always found in locations that uh, they've already searched because they bring them back to that location they find the body and they stop searching which doesn't interrupt them anymore or bring more people into their territory do I think Bigfoot are hybrids yeah, um, I believe that they are mixed with something uh, based on the DNA that I have uh, read about. Uh, they have human DNA and then they also have an unknown DNA. So I believe there is a mixture there. And also who knows, you know, if they've been caught and uh, experimented with on other animals that have been released just to see, you know, kind of what happens. So yeah, I, I think that there is some hybrids out there. And, you know, a lot of people may disagree with me on this. Um, it's just an opinion right now. Like I said, I'm, I'm learning from you guys just the same as I put information out to you. I mean, I'm still learning. I've even wondered sometimes, and a lot of people and a lot of the guys that follow me uh, probably disagree with. Um, I think Dogman Werewolf was probably the same creature. And I would even go as far to say possibly, possibly even related to Bigfoot as a distant cousin. I believe that that, that may be a hybrid blood 
I think that the blood will be very close as far as the DNA because there's so many things about them that are so similar and been seen in the same area. Patricia says, I believe the government has caught some and experimented with them and as a cryptid. I 100% agree with that. April Gully says, I think they are from another planet that ended up here for some reason or other government found them and found a way to control them for their own purposes. Uh, enjoy the question and uh, uh, enjoy your theory. Uh, I, I don't think they're from another planet. I, like I said, I believe they're from here. I don't believe in the so-called aliens from other planets. I believe that they are deceptionists like I was talking about. Because I've seen these creatures eat, bleed, uh, the way they walk, the way they hunt. They forage just like a, a bear would. They are opportunists. They will eat easy things. They've stolen hogs, chickens, uh, happened to the neighbors. Uh, but again, that's just, you know, my opinion. I don't have all the answers. I'm still learning too, but you know, I, I that's just, this is what I like about doing this is I get to see everybody's theories and everybody's opinions because without a body, nobody knows. That's just my opinion. I mean, there there can't nobody sit down that hasn't had the body and can 100% say what they are, what they do, where they're from. Because without a body, there's no way of knowing. I mean, we're all speculating. We're just going by you know encounters and information that's been given to us, and then we come up with the most logical conclusion uh, don't see no more there let me see if somebody has anybody seen any looking for questions I got a person sent, uh, not really a question, but a statement in, I think it's pretty cool. They said that a uh, dogman appears to humans in a 10 year cycle that falls with the uh, even numbered year. So that, that's interesting. Uh, do you think they are like the giants that King David killed? I, I think possibly. Uh, and a lot of people say, you know, they talk about the Anunnaki and then the Anunnaki, you know, uh, having the children and the Nephilim. And, um, and then people say, well, the Nephilim and the flood. The Bible says that they were here before and after the flood. Uh, the Nephilim blood, they said, well, how did the Nephilim blood get from the flood because everything outside of the ark died and the theory that was brought to me by a good friend of mine named Steve uh, he's very intelligent I go to him for a lot of my questions also is it says Noah's blood was pure but it doesn't say his sons and his sons' his wives were so maybe that was a possibility of how it got here but I definitely believe that yeah some of that giant blood was able to make it to the new world and that's how a lot of these things were there because I mean if they were just a monkey in my opinion they would not have the intelligence that they had I believe these things are a lot smarter than people give them credit for. I believe they're even capable of ambush. Uh, Ristic says, I hope I pronounced your name right, there are dozens probably a hundreds of unknown beings. Yes, I agree with that. Actually, I was watching the news this morning and they have found a new insect that they've just discovered. So yeah, there's tons of stuff out there to be discovered. Uh, I think Bobo said that he believes that there was four, I think he said four cryptids for sure that they agree on exist. Hey, Patricia, that's a really cool uh, question. Uh, down at my granny's, I'm glad you brought that up. She says there is there is a being that is white that travels through the trees above. My son has seen one. Uh, 
they had that problem at my granny's. It was something white also, and whenever they got close to it, it was an old man in a white t-shirt with no body below him that would glide through the pasture. They uh, actually rebuked him in Jesus' name and uh, never seen him again. So you might be something that you may want to try if you, you know, if that's your beliefs. Rusty says no, giants are not Bigfoots, 100%. Yeah, I, I don't believe that the giants are Bigfoots. I believe that there is some blood in there somewhere that is from the ancient times that are allowing these things to be so strong, large, and intelligent. Jerry Williams is a big advocate of the predator aspect, including the ambush sites. That's by Craig Skelton. Yes, uh, yeah, I'll watch uh, Jerry <clears throat> and... Um, I would agree that they do ambush. Uh, they tried to ambush my mom one night. I done a video on that. Uh, she was going down to take care of my granny, and um, luckily my sister had looked out the window and saw it crawl inside of a broke down car that it knew my mom would be parking by. It crawled in there and was waiting, I believe, to get her that night. So yeah, I do believe they are ambush predators for sure. And uh, that was by, like I said, Craig Skelton asked that question. It's a good question. Cindy Curry, right? I didn't know about the Sinophone until I started watching their videos. In hieroglyphics, there are all kinds of weird hybrids in the glyphs. I think there are lots of things we don't know about. Oh yeah, there's for sure lots of things we don't know about. Uh, a lot of things have been removed and hidden from us so that we don't know about it. Um, I'm a firm believer and there's a lot of knowledge out there that's been hid from us that we don't know about. And I think that when we get close to finding out, they try to shut us down. Uh, I've been having a lot of trouble with uh, people not getting notifications, getting unsubscribed from my videos. So what I've done in order to combat that is two things. I opened a Facebook account so people can go on there and see my newest updates and uploads whenever I post them. Another thing I've done, every Sunday I do an upload of a video. Every Sunday. That way you guys know to go find my channel on Sunday. There will be an upload, even if it's good or not. I want to throw something out there on Sunday. And then you all can check to make sure you're subscribed, your bill is still run. A lot of people have been doing that lately. They've been emailing me saying thank you for doing the, you know, every Sunday because we're finding we are unsubbed. Uh, I theorize Hollywood, this from uh, Greg's Bear. I theorize Hollywood has been slowly indoctrinating us into accepting learning what is out there, such as the movie Predator, is more real than we realize. Supreme beings with the ultimate camouflage. Do you think Hollywood has used reality and labeled it? Uh, let's see. It's trying to cut me off. Fiction, to adjust our minds to. Yes, uh, I, I believe that <clears throat> Hollywood tells a lot of things that people don't catch on to. They put a lot of things out there. And also the same way, uh, I, I believe that, you know, in every fairy tale, there's a little bit of truth. You should look up, you know, Ring Around the Rosie. It's a pretty dark uh, nursery rhyme. But yeah, I believe they do that. Uh, Kelly Horner says, why is it important uh, for authorities to keep these cryptids being secret? I, I think the reason for that is because they have discredited them for so long. I believe they have done mutations uh made hybrids and things like that and also money i mean if if you go out and tell people hey there's a creature in the state parks that may eat you and tear you apart and gut you and hang you upside down in a tree from a vine they're going to lose their campers their hikers their walkers their events that they have out there and it's going to cost them millions of dollars and when it comes to money over life well i think you pretty much know what they're going to choose it also, if they admit to that, Kelly, it uh, it brings them into uh, I, I think a, a liability too for a lot of lawsuits. That would be one of my one of my guesses. Yeah, Craig says, look at the story with you and your mom where it tried to get into your vehicle. He said I would have had an accident in my pants. Uh, yeah, that was pretty scary when it grabbed the door handle and tried to get in. Like I said, these things will try to enter, you know, where you're at. They will try to come into your home, your house, your tent, wherever you're at. Um, set you a perimeter, have a good fire, and uh, keep your head on a swivel. You know, be very vigilant. Uh, 
And remember, they're going to know you're in the woods before you ever see or hear them. They're going to already know you're there.